I'm not, I'm personally not right now, not working in film. Um, you know, I'm working in video. And uh, having that layer of detachment is really, um, I don't know, it's interesting. It's interesting. It feels, it feels like, I'm, it definitely feels like a different sort of process for sure. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting how you related the smoke drawings to her physical form. Mm -hmm. As though, I hadn't thought about them that way as her form, but we've heard from several people that there does very much feel like there's a bodily presence in all of her work, but I hadn't heard it mentioned attached to those drawings. I don't know if you had any My more sense when I saw them initially was that they are probably her most personal works here. I mean, maybe apart from like the poetry and that sort of thing. Because I can't imagine she had the mask on when she was doing that. Because I think she would be probably obstructed. I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, but like, I don't think I'd want to be doing that with the mask, right? Um, so in some ways I feel like maybe this was part of her process, her elevation, her like getting to her muse, to getting to that, um, you know, to getting to Wakamoto speak through her, speak with her, like, I want to know what their first date was like, you know, <laughs> like, what that look like, um, so, so many questions, so many questions, um, but yeah, um, more than anything, like, I feel like I got, like, an image of, like, how she created all these other things, because, you know, there is the imagery of her with her mask and, like, you know, the, the posed, the couple of posed photos that I saw, I'm like, those make sense to me. She wasn't doing that with those smoke drawings. She just wasn't, right? She had to like have a candle and like there was like a much more physical uh, kind of a thing. Definitely that experimentation thing is uh, probably what attracted me most to those, to those things. But I'm a process artist anyway. I like, I'm more, much more interested in like the journey than I am the product in so many ways. Well, I think so was Paulina. Yeah, her journey just happened to involve the masks and the changes yeah. and black and blue. Yeah, I listened a couple of times to that uh, Long John Nabel radio show, and I was just like, God, I want these guys to shut up so <laughs> that she can talk. I mean, like, wow, that's like, was like a four or five hour radio show, and she only gets like maybe half an hour at this time. Yeah. So you kind of got to listen to a lot of like, <laughs> to get there. Um, but it's still a fascinating listen to like go back to like, I don't know if people have listened to that. You can find it on YouTube. It's been, I know it's been playing here in the yeah. gallery as well. But like, um, yeah, I mean, I used to listen a lot when I was a lot younger too, like all the radio like dramas and stuff like that. And it's like a whole other thing just to listen to like people like on a live mic from the 50s <laughs> talking about like whatever's on their mind. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of an amazing, an amazing but yeah, gosh, I just, you know, and it gets back to like, kind of like my like fundamental feminist like rage where I'm just like, give her the mic for a while. Like, don't like <laughs> let this be filtered. Don't let her like muse speaking be filtered through the opinions of these other dudes in the radio show. You know, just let her go, let her go, let her go, let her go. Um, yeah, if I had a radio show, she'd be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> So you said you tried to channel Lakamo. What about Paulina? I figured that that would happen here, you know, amongst her, amongst her stuff. You know, I felt like, you know, Lakamo would probably be like portable, you know. But I don't know. I don't, know. I, don't, I don't even pretend to know how these things work. Right? Um, I know what speaks to me, and um, that's Lakamo. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Lockwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and like, who knows? Maybe I just wasn't here in the right, you know, here in the right frequency. I can't, I can't be sure. I can't be sure. You know, he might show up later. He might, maybe, maybe he might, I'll let you know if he like comes tonight. It's like, look. <laughs> we got some things to settle here. <laughs> yeah. Did you um, comment on this commonality between the two of you about destroying the art? Mm -hmm. Obviously, destruction being part of the creative process, but one of the great pieces, unfortunately, of Paulina's collection that we no longer have is the Last Supper piece that she did yeah. for the World Search. It's this amazing piece. Yeah. Um, and it feels like such a loss that we don't have that now. Now that Lily is helping excavate her legacy here. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, I wonder if you'd comment on that 
I mean, potentially to destroy that that you create. You know, there's things that I, that that just don't they don't work anymore. You know, for me, and uh, you know, I go I go back to my office now and think about like the boxes and boxes of papers that I have, for example, and it's like a mixture of like old bills and some diaries and some other stuff. And I'm like, should I just toss that whole box? Should I like just get rid of the whole thing? Because I know like most of the stuff in there I don't want. I don't want to know uh, my long distance calls from 1995, <laughs> which are probably in that box, you know, and my paper, paper bills, right? Um, but it's mixed in, I'm sure, with like diaries and things like that. And I come on, it's like, there's a part that just wants to go away, away, away. But I am also an archivist in my, at my heart, right? And I, like, I know that that stuff can be important. So I, like, I'm, I'm torn all the time between these things. But I do know that like process sometimes like... So uh, a couple years ago, there was this great big Mike Kelly show up at... Um, uh, in the Bronx, um, and like it was, a, they took over the whole. It was a PS2 or whatever. Um, took over the whole museum. It was like everything, everything, scraps of paper, matchbooks, plans, sketches, the whole thing. And like there were some things where I'm just like, I don't want, I, I don't. I mean, I should be so lucky that I would get like kind of that scale of an exhibit, but like I'm just like, I don't want this stuff on display. I'm going to go home and I'm going to put stuff into the trash. Like, this is exactly what I'm doing. I want it to go, like, I want it to be buried. I don't want to see people, like, people to dig through my process. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's super interesting, too. Um, and to have a finished work that is, uh, or, like, whatever, a mostly finished work, I guess. Because, um, you know, she painted over a few times, right? Um, so, like, when is something finished? When, 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 when? And, uh, you know, and like, what, what is it? Like, what is it about uh, something like The Last Supper? Like, you know, I'm never gonna, probably never gonna make a Last Supper image because, like, I don't care about that scene. It has nothing to say to me. Um, but what in my past might I have changed my opinion about? You know, um, I don't know. There could be there could be any number of things. You know, poems or um, images or things like that that I'm like. I just I just don't think that this is really representative of the narrative I want to be responsible for carrying forward, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I feel like for my own purposes, there's some things that never feel safe to put out into the public because I think that they will be misunderstood. And I think coming from a place of like, I mean, coming from the margins, when you're living in the margins, like, and, I mean, from my own, from my own perspective, like, being misunderstood sometimes is like the worst possible thing, you know. Um, recently, I had a really lovely profile written of me uh, that went into a magazine, and um, you know, the writer. Uh, Super nice person, super nice guy, very well intentioned. Um, but then uh, he like got his facts kind of wrong, and so some of them I was able to like skirt in the fact checking process. But you know, one of the things that like kind of stung is that he went in and he published his profile of, like Rain, this like great trans artist who's doing all these other things, and then he used this pull quote, and it wasn't quite what I had said. Um, he said something, he had me say something to the effect of like, so, uh, you know, being born in the wrong body was a real challenge and, you know, now I'm not in the wrong body anymore and so everything's great. So that's the core of it. But as a medically transitioned trans woman, like, there's a lot of political baggage that come along with like this wrong body narrative, right? Um, I don't believe that I was born into the wrong body. I believe that I was born a person who has a trans experience. And so this is very much the right body and this is the right time and like there's challenges that come with that. But like for that to be in print for a couple of days, that kind of devastated me, you know, because I'm like, oh, like why does this narrative keep coming up? Because it's not the right narrative and it's something that is being layered on top of me. And that kind of level of misunderstanding 
just happens. We thicken our skins, we move along. Like, it's not something that I like fought back about. It's not something that I'm terribly interested in fighting back about. It's something that I can speak to later and say, like, this is what happens. You open yourself to uh, understanding, and like people, people have their basic understandings of things. They have their takeaways, and like I'm also, in, as a political person, I'm very much in favor of incremental advances. Um, I know a lot of times that I am the first person, the first trans people, pers first trans pe person that people have met, and so you know. They have to take in information about that and like have to extrapolate from me onto everybody else that they ever meet or have an awareness of who embodies a trans identity. So, you know, you roll your dice, you move your mice. <laughs> it's kind of like the way that works, right? Thank you, Ray. Thank you so much. Yeah. This has been wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Paulina. You. Yes. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.